I never imagined I'd find myself driving alone to an isolated ski resort in Alaska, the very place Amelia and I had planned to visit together as a pre-wedding getaway. Yet, here I was, steering my rented car through the biting cold, the sky a relentless gray, matching the turmoil inside me. Every mile further into the wilderness felt like a step deeper into my own reservoir of thoughts, a mix of betrayal and a desperate need to escape the mess my life had become. The resort appeared as a shadow against the vast, white landscape, the snow falling so thick it seemed to swallow the sounds of my arrival. As I pulled up to the main lodge, the crunch of the tires on the packed snow was the only evidence of my presence. Stepping out into the cold, the air bit at my cheeks, a sharp reminder that this was no longer a journey we'd share. I was here alone, nursing a heart shredded by Amelia's affair with someone I thought was my friend. Inside, the warmth of the lodge offered little comfort. The receptionist gave me a sympathetic smile as she handed me the keys to my cabin. It's the one at the end, quite secluded, she said, her voice a soft echo in the vast, wooden hall. As I thanked her, her eyes flicked to something, or someone, over my shoulder, her expression tightening briefly with concern. Settling into my cabin, I felt the weight of the silence around me. The room was cozy, a stark contrast to the chilling expanse outside my window, where the landscape stretched like a frozen black ocean. It was in this overwhelming quiet that I first sensed I was not just escaping a failed relationship, but also stepping into a void where something felt unsettlingly off. Dinner that evening was a casual affair in the lodge's dining hall. I met Marcus and Eliza, a couple from Anchorage escaping their routine and the demands of parenting. Marcus, with his easy laugh, seemed to find solace in the brief respite from family life, while Eliza, her eyes tired yet bright with the joy of the getaway, shared stories of their children with a warmth that stung my freshly solitary state. As the night drew on, and the guests retired to their respective corners of comfort, the receptionist's earlier concern nagged at me. There had been an odd mention of an unregistered guest, a woman with dark eyes and blonde hair. Little did I know, this detail would unravel into a thread of eerie encounters that would turn my retreat into anything but the peaceful solitude I had sought. As the days shortened and the darkness of the Alaskan winter deepened, the resort began to feel less like a refuge and more like a stage set for something far less mundane than a simple escape from heartache. It was on my third night, under the heavy overcast skies, that I first truly noticed her, the strange blonde woman. She seemed to be everywhere and nowhere, appearing at the edges of my vision only to vanish when I turned for a clearer look. One morning, over coffee in the lounge, Marcus and I discussed the oddness of her presence. No one seems to know who she is, he mused, looking over his shoulder cautiously. Even the receptionist seems a bit unnerved by her. That conversation laid a foundation of dread that I couldn't shake off. The resort, once a cozy haven, now felt imbued with an air of mystery, as if the very walls whispered secrets in the crackling firelight. The engagement celebration that evening should have been a cheerful highlight, with laughter echoing through the lodge and the clink of glasses punctuating tales of future hopes. Instead, the atmosphere thickened with something unspoken yet palpable. As the newly engaged couple danced, their joy contrasted sharply against a backdrop of murmurs about the eerie, unregistered guest. It was after the party, as the guests dispersed, that the first truly bizarre incident occurred. I was walking back to my cabin when I heard the crunch of footsteps behind me. Turning, I expected to see Marcus or another late-night reveler, but was met instead with the unsettling sight of the blonde woman standing still in the snow. Her breath didn't cloud the air, her eyes a chilling, solid black in the moonlight. My heart raced. This was no ordinary guest. Fleeing back to my cabin, I locked the door and peered out the window. The woman was gone as quickly as she had appeared, but the night felt different now, heavier. Sleep was elusive as I lay listening to the wind howl, the branches tapping against the window like skeletal fingers. The following morning, the resort buzzed with whispered stories of strange noises and shadows moving just beyond the reach of the lodge's lights. It was clear I wasn't the only one who had experienced something unexplainable. The blonde woman, a specter in the midst of our isolated gathering, had turned what was meant to be a sanctuary into a theater of the paranormal. 
The snowstorm that swept through on the fourth night encapsulated the resort in a literal and metaphorical whiteout. The feeling of being cut off from the world intensified the unnerving atmosphere that had been building. Inside the lodge, the fire blazed more fiercely than usual, casting eerie shadows that danced across the walls and the faces of the guests, who were now subdued, their earlier conviviality replaced by a taut edge of tension. During dinner, the whispers I had heard since my arrival coalesced into more pointed discussions about the strange occurrences. A couple from a nearby cabin spoke of waking to the sensation of being watched, and the hipster couple argued openly with the receptionist about the need for better security. It was clear that the unregistered blonde woman had become more than just a curiosity. She was now a harbinger of something dark and unexplained. As the night unfolded, the tempest outside mirrored the chaos within. I was drawn outside by a scream, a sound so piercing and filled with terror that it chilled me to my core. What I saw in the blizzard was surreal. Figures moving through the storm, not with panic, but with an eerie purpose. Among them was the blonde woman, her figure distinct against the stark whiteness, leading a procession towards the main lodge. Heart pounding, I followed at a distance, my senses alert to every movement. As I approached, the sight that met my eyes was something out of a nightmare. The lodge's main hall was transformed into a grotesque tableau. Guests were draped in bizarre costumes, some dancing around a makeshift altar where the strange woman presided. The scene was both mesmerizing and horrifying. A pagan ritual played out in the heart of Alaska. Without warning, the celebration turned violent. The dance became a frenzy, and I witnessed a guest collapse, only to be dragged across the snow towards the woods. The reality of the danger was undeniable. I retreated in horror, realizing that whatever was happening was beyond my understanding, beyond any rational explanation. Back in my cabin, the adrenaline coursing through my veins, I packed my essentials. The idea of spending another minute in that cursed place was unthinkable. I needed to escape, to get away from the madness that had overtaken the resort. As I slipped out of my cabin, the screams and the firelight flickering through the trees confirmed my worst fears. The resort had become a nightmare from which I had to wake. With the chilling images of the night's horrors seared into my mind, I stumbled through the heavy snow, away from the hellish scene behind me. The cold bit through my layers, as if mocking my flimsy human defenses against the primal forces of nature and darkness. Every step away from the lodge was a struggle against the wind that seemed determined to push me back towards the nightmare I was desperate to escape. I could hear the crackle and roar of fire as it began to consume the wooden structures of the resort, a destructive chorus to the screams that still echoed behind me. My breath formed quick, frozen clouds that disappeared into the night, a stark reminder of the warm, living breath of the woman who did not breathe. It felt as though the wilderness itself was conspiring to erase the line between reality and the unearthly. After what felt like an eternity, I spotted the outline of an abandoned ranger station, barely visible through the swirling snow. My relief at finding shelter was tainted by the fear of what I had fled. Would it follow me here? Was this sanctuary, or just another trap? The station was cold. The silence incited a stark contrast to the chaos I had left. I barricaded the door with whatever was at hand, creating a meager fortress against the unknown. Sitting in the eerie quiet, I replayed the night's events in my mind, trying to discern reality from madness. Had I really seen what I thought I had? The more I thought about it, the more the details blurred. The faces of the guests twisted in grotesque joy, the strange woman's eyes as black as the stormy night sky, the ritualistic fervor that turned to violence. It all seemed like a fever dream. But the fear was real, as real as the cold that now enveloped me. As dawn broke, the storm seemed to lessen its fury, and with the morning light came a semblance of peace, or perhaps just resignation. I knew I had to leave the station and seek help, to find out if others had escaped, or if the horror had consumed them all. The thought of facing the outside world again was daunting. Was the nightmare confined to the resort, or had I stepped into a broader horror that spanned the frozen wilderness? With a deep, steadying breath, I opened the door to the new day. The landscape was calm, the snow a pristine blanket that hid the terrors of the night. I set out, the weight of my story a heavy load. The true horror, I realized, was not just in what I had escaped but in the knowledge that somewhere out there, 
the strange woman might still wander, and the darkness of the night might yet hold sway over more than just the physical world.